Hi, it's Mrs. Farber. Today we're going to read a book called A, Ho a House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. We've read some Eric Carle books before, so you might recognize his name as the author and illustrator. A House for Hermit Crab is a book about change. It's about being worried and scared about trying something new, but also that when you try something new, it turns out to be not so bad as you might have imagined it. It actually sometimes turns out to be pretty awesome. And sometimes you have to go through many changes, especially when you're little like you and you're getting to be grown-ups. It can take a while. Anyway, while we read this book, think about ways that you might be changing or things that you may have worried about but then turned out pretty awesome in the end. A House for Hermit Crab. Look at the end pages. Kind of reminds me of finger painting and mixing all the colors. Also kind of reminds me of waves in the ocean. A house for hermit crab. Time to move, said hermit crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean. But it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. I bet he's feeling pretty scared. Probably worried, too. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so well, so plain, thought Hermit Crab. Not very exciting. Pretty boring, actually. Camouflage just blends right in with all the seaweed around it. You might not even notice it was there. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live in my house? It's so plain. It needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked him up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish, moving slowly along the sea floor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would signaled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked him up with his claw and put him on his house. There he is, the little one. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. Look at his shell. Look at how it's changed. As each month passes, it changes and gets a little bit better. He keeps adding new things. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails. Crawling over a rock on the ocean floor, 
They grazed as they went, picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hard working you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. And happily, Hermit Crab picked him up with his claw and placed him on his shell. He's got a little bit of everything. He keeps getting more and more friends as he changes and grows. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked him up with his claw and placed him on his shell. They do look fierce. Look at those spikes. Wouldn't want to tangle with them. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. I wonder what they're going to do. That's kind of scary. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. Oh, now it's not so dark anymore. Thank goodness for our lanternfish. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. And Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, said Hermit Crab. He's got everything he needs. Look at all the things and changes he's made. He's got things to protect him, to make him beautiful, to clean him, to protect him. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a little too small. Little by little, over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find a novel, bigger home. But he had to come. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They're like a family. How can I ever leave them? That's the hard thing about change. Sometimes you have to leave some things behind. And that can be difficult. In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered hermit crab. I must move on. You're welcome to live here. But you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. And there's his old shell, too small. That one looks just right. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he bade goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain. Sponges, he thought, barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there's so many possibilities. 
I can't wait to get started. That's a good attitude for him to have, isn't it? It's a big change. He could be scared and worried and hide away. Instead, he looked at what the opportunities are, what the things are to be excited about. You might be feeling that way a little bit. Soon, we are going to be moving from kindergarten to grade one. That's a big change. You might be feeling a little worried. Maybe a little excited, maybe a little nervous or scared, and that's okay. You just have to remember the hermit crab. He was a little nervous, a little scared. As he was growing, he knew it was time for him to move on, to go out of his shell where it was comfortable and where he had all of his friends. But... He knew that if he tried something new, and as he grew, he went into something better, he could make it into whatever he wanted. There were all sorts of possibilities. It's just like you going into grade one. You've outgrown kindergarten now. You're ready to move out and try something new. Think about that. Maybe Write down some things that you were scared about when you first came to kindergarten. Or maybe some things that you're scared about or worried or nervous about grade one. And then, on the other half of your paper, think about all the exciting things that happened to you in kindergarten. Or all the exciting and new possibilities there are in grade one. Making new friends. Learning new things getting to sit in big kid desks, getting to do new things that you couldn't in kindergarten. Oh, there's so many possibilities. See what you can come up with. Thanks for reading the story with me today. See you soon.